work through this and figure this out, okay? So I'm now going to begin with our call to worship. I'm gonna share my screen with you all and pull this up. Just bear with me. Here's our call to worship. For those of you who are um, calling in from, um, from the telephone, this is a call and a response call to worship. I will say a stanza, and then you will respond with the, phrase, with the words, come and worship. Okay, and everyone is going to say, come and worship. Um, but again, you won't hear everyone. You'll just hear me. So let us begin our worship. Children of God, family of God, come, come and, and worship. worship. Even if you are tired and worn out, come, come and, and worship. worship. Lay down the heavy things you are carrying come and come and, and worship. worship. You are unneeded. Listen to what Jesus wants to tell you. Come um, and worship. See if you can discover how Jesus wants to use you. Come, um, and, come and worship. For Jesus is humble and gentle, and he is willing to give us everything we need to follow him. Amen. 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 will read this prayer for us. So, um, Joanne, if you want to mute everyone again, except for me, that would be great. Okay. And everyone can, if you're able to see it, you can follow along, but all, you're welcome to just close your eyes and just listen, okay? Let us pray. God of our days and times, come close to us in this hour. Calm our hearts and our minds, restore our spirits, and give us peace. Lord, allay our fears, bolster our courage and our compassion, and increase our capacity for love. Lord, in this season, we have been made uncomfortable. Our movements have been curtailed, and we are inundated with often conflicting information. Our minds are racing, but we cling to your promise to be with us always. Lord, we are your creation and our hearts can safely trust in you. And during our time of social isolation, help us to get closer to you. Let compassion rise up in us and send us an extra anointing of your love. And Lord, allow us to hear your voice amid the cacophony of voices around us and to restore our joy. In your son's name, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Now we are going to move to our opening hymn. And um, I, Billy, will you be leading us in that? Joanne, can you unmute Billy? Okay. Okay, and then you can mute me, Joanne. <laughs> Until Billy is done. Um, okay, so verse one. He has done great things for me. Great things, great things. He has done great things for me. He has made a way for me. Made a way. Made a way, he has made a way for me. He will give you victory, victory, victory. He will give you victory. I'm gonna be a witness for him. Witness, witness. I'm going to be a witness for him. I'm going to let my little light shine. Shine, 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 shine. I'm going to let my little light shine. He's done great things. He has done great things for me. 
great things, great things. He has done great things for me. Amen. Yeah. I don't know. The cat jumped down off my yeah. lap, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> Okay, Billy, thank you. That was beautiful. Amen. And even though you couldn't hear us, we were really singing along exuberantly with you. So thank you so very much. If we were together, we would be sharing the peace right now, but we are not in a position to be obviously together. Um, we all know who's gathered here. So that's, um, it's beautiful. That's beautiful to know who we are sharing community with today by distance. Um, and we'd like to share the peace with each other, even um, with all of those who are gathered here. So one way that we can do this is by sharing in this, um, this peace prayer together. So Joanne, could you make sure everyone's mute mics are muted except for mine? I am going to begin the prayer, but there's a prayer for all of us to, to say together. Um, so let me begin for us. May today there be peace within. May you trust that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith in yourself and in others. May you use the gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content with yourself just the way you are. Let this knowledge settle into your bones and allow your soul the freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love. It is there for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. All, thank you. We all shared that with each other. It was beautiful. All right, we are going to move on to our scripture reading. And um, our first scripture reading is a, is a, call, is a call and response reading. It's from Psalm 23, I will be the leader, and so I will read the parts that are in <clears throat> that are in black, <clears throat> and I invite all of you to read the parts that are in blue. For those of you who are on the telephone and cannot see this, we are reading Psalm 23, and if you're able to open it in your Bible, I think you'll be able to figure out where, um, if you just follow along, you'll understand I, I believe where um, where your reading part is. Do you want me to unmute everyone on this? I don't think so. I think it'll just get really messy. Um, okay. But I will, maybe I'll, I'll indicate, okay? Okay. So I'm going to begin. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And now everyone else says, the Lord, Lord makes me lie, lie down, down in green pastures. The Lord leads me beside still waters. The, 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 Lord the Lord restores my soul. The Lord leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even, even though I walk, walk through, through the darkest, darkest valley, valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the steps of the Lord. Our next reading comes from um, the Gospel of John. 10th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in through another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is a shepherd, is the shepherd of the sheep. And the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them, brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, 
and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with disciples, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and out and go find pasture. The thief only comes to steal and to kill and destroy. And I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This ends the reading of the Holy Scripture. And now Pastor Afi will read our sermon text from the, from the book of Acts. Amen. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of God for the, the people, people of God. God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Before we hear our sermon, we are going to have, we're going to sing another song, Blessed Be the Name. And again, we turn to Billy to lead us in this hymn. I am going to, I, I know that I know this one, but I am going to default to Pastor Fee. Okay, no problem. <laughs> All right, well, let's get started and um, uh, we'll just start at verse one. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, blessed be the name of the Lord, the glories of my God and King. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus, the name that is Let it be the name that is Let it be the name that is the Blessed be the name, blessed be the name 
from here and um, I want to thank you all for uh, being present for worship. I want to say thanks to everyone who's taken the time to make this worship service happen today um, and just uh, say a word of prayer before we start the sermon uh, for God's holy presence to be with us as we continue on. So let us pray. Lord God, our holy, uh, mighty, and loving Redeemer, we thank you for your presence with us in this place today. We thank you for your presence in our hearts, and we ask that as we continue this worship service, um, celebrating your life, celebrating your love, and celebrating one another, uh, that you would reach into our hearts and um, touch us, oh God, right where we need to be touched. Lord, I pray that those who have come looking for something specific from you, needing something specific from you, that you would deliver them the word that you have just for them, oh God. We thank you that even as we gather by phone and by video, that not one of us will leave the same as we have come. And so, Lord, we turn this service and this portion of this service over to you for your Holy Spirit to have its way. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. 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 So, this Sunday, Communion Sunday, is um, a Sunday where we're going to focus on the beloved community. And the beloved community is the community of Christ, the community of believers, which gather together in order to do the work of God on earth. And I want to highlight, um, just starting out with our message today, that's focusing on beloved community and what does that mean for us? That's the title of the sermon, Beloved Community. What does that mean for us? I want to highlight a couple of verses from Acts 2. Um, verses 46 and 47, and you can feel free to read along with me. It says, day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. And this is one of my very favorite Bible verses because it paints a picture of what I believe is the ideal church. It says in um, verse 41, Acts chapter 2, verse 41, that over 3,000 people were gathered um, in this first gathering of the church of Acts. And for us right now to think of it, it's a nightmare and a dream. We'd love to have a gathering where we have 3,000 people, but with the coronavirus being out, it's a nightmare to think of that many people being gathered. But anyway, the members of this community uh, had gathered in, in many, many numbers, and they were made up of all different kinds of people. They were made up of people who were yet seeking God. They were made up of Christian disciples. They were made up of rich, poor, Gentile, Jew, noble persons, and slaves alike. And they all came together like family to worship God. And the thing I love about this is that it, it almost feels like a family reunion. Everybody is eating together, talking, and hanging out 
so that we get the feeling that there was so much love and so much compassion flowing between the members of this group that it was surreal or even too good to be true. So the example that was set by this first gathering of the beloved community of Christ it really goes deeper than what we might often witness with our own extended family members. Their bond in this community seems to be like immediate family members, people that are living in the same house. The scripture tells us that all who believed were together and that they had all things in common, and also that they would even sell possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any have need. So for me, that paints a picture of immediate family, not just meeting somebody after a, uh, a year and, and we're getting together at the family reunion, but we're all in the same household. When we all live in the same household, everything in the house is for everyone in the house, from food to furniture. Amen? Amen. This is the ideal Christian community, one that goes beyond just polite introductions and socializing. Um, and so it's, it's a picture that always gives me a feeling of hope, a feeling of community, and a feeling of love. But it's also a picture that makes me think about what about people who have had a different experience of family? I think for many of us as uh, who grew up, uh, we might have come up poor, um, but we, we actually ended up establishing ourselves, especially in the Solomon community, as, as basic uh, and good, solid, middle-class folk. And so we do have that understanding that what's for one in a household is for all in a household. But what about for people who don't have the experience of a family um, that's a safe space, where home is in a safe place? What about people whose families practice favoritism regularly or someone who's been cast out of their home? What about those who've grown up with the entire family never having enough for everyone in the house? It may be more difficult for others uh, who have experienced that type of family relationship to even imagine what a community, a beloved community might look like uh, where there's love more than enough love for all to have. So the people that Christ is calling us to and the people that in following Christ we are called to serve have always been those who did not have um, as much or those who were outcast, those who were marginalized, um, people of that, of that nature. And Christ has called us to model his, his being the good shepherd with people such as those. <clears throat> One of the things that I really, really love about Solomon Community Temple is, and, and a lot of folks have said this to me over the years, I've been at Solomon going on six years now, and a lot of people in, have come in and, and stated that they love the feeling of being welcomed and received, of being warmly received, and of being loved. And over the years, I've had the joy of seeing the people in this congregation demonstrate a true love of fellowshipping together. This has become um, and is a beloved community. Um, some, the, the choir goes to plays together. We spend time way, way more than just on Sunday morning together. The folks in the choir go to plays together. We attend birthday parties of members in the, in the congregation. We attend family reunions of members in the congregation. Uh, we hold each other and walk with each other through grief, with patience and with tenderness. And so I've seen a great love and experienced a great um, beloved community here at Solomon. And I've also seen you share that love with people outside of yourselves, people um, who don't walk into the church on a Sunday morning. And I'm sharing this and saying this to, to commend Solomon Community Temple United Methodist Church. We, we have taken on um, the desire and the, the actions and the behaviors that would touch people outside of our normal circle. So those people that are leading the food pantry, for example, they're an inspiration, not just to me, but to many others that come into the food pantry week after week. 
the people who volunteer for our youth program, and um, all of the members of the congregation that took so many great measures to show love to the children in the community of the church. Um, and even more recently, those who are making masks, those who are making phone calls, and those who are working with hope and faith together have helped to create a beloved community. And so we've had a lot of people over the years come through our doors and feel attracted to the love that Christ offers them through us. Many people have witnessed the warmth and the kindness of our community of faith and have even felt compelled to join us. But there are also those who have not had the chance to know the fullness of that love. And this is where our call as a church comes in. This is where our, our message and, and our prophetic word comes in today. Um, there are some who have come into our doors when we weren't quite on our game. And so because we were off of our game for one reason or another, some folks didn't experience the love of Christ the way that we intended them to and the way that we hoped that they would. So um, we're not alone. We're not alone in, in kind of falling off of our game from time to time. And one of the hardest things I've seen across the board with many churches is um, that, that the church today is struggling to take Christ's teachings beyond the introduction and commit to building deep relationships with people that are not one of our fold. And you all know what I mean. Amen. Uh, you know, we get comfortable with the people that we're comfortable with. And we have to go beyond just smiling and, and greeting people warmly when they come in for service. We've got to take that relationship and build a deep um, and connecting relationship that will go beyond um, acquaintances. Uh, because uh, no matter what church a person belongs to, even if we're talking about organizations or um, if we're talking about belonging to a workforce, no matter what, it takes time to get to know other people. It takes time to get to learn the cultural norms and to establish a common language or to understand the language of a group of people. It takes time to become family. It's not always a quick and straightforward process. And that's okay as long as we remember that as the church, we are called to keep our focus on Christ and to keep trying, no matter what, to build those relationships with people beyond our regular scope. Amen? One of the things that came to mind when I was writing the sermon, especially with this particular part, about what it takes to build relationships is when Gabriella used to get up and share her testimony, and she would say that, um, she used to get really discouraged when we were doing our kids program and we would have to start all over um, every time we we started uh, opened up the program anew. We would lose kids, we would lose volunteers, and we would have to start all over to recruit and get the youth program up and running again. And it really discouraged her and she was ready to get up. And so that's a message for us. To, to understand that it's going to take time for us to build a community of faith. It's going to take time for us to, uh, uh, excuse me, to expand our community of faith. And so we've got to be willing to keep working at building relationships with folks, even when it seems that we have failed. And, and also, we don't know how long it took for the disciples and the apostles to build the church up to the point that we see it in Acts. We don't know how long that took. But we do know that it began with small groups of people having spiritual gatherings in their homes. It began over something like a shared lunch after working or um, a potluck after a meeting. Amen. And so I, I found this article that kind of uh, supports or that supports that idea um, in an in a online website called AmazingBibleTimeline.com. And it says that the apostles travel from Jerusalem to other parts of the world after the crucifixion, and their main purpose was to spread the teachings of Jesus when he was still alive. But some of them also founded um, early church gatherings, and it says that they had religious gatherings in private homes and that they referred to those houses as uh, churches. And so this, this is the start of our faith. 
It doesn't start with maybe this huge thousand, thousand uh, of people gathering. It starts with a small group such as ourselves coming together, working together so that we can um, continue to spread the word of the gospel. So today, today as we're looking at our church, as we're looking at what does it mean for us to be a beloved community, we have been forced to create new norms. We have been forced to look at where we are and reevaluate, especially because of the coronavirus. But to be honest, we needed to reevaluate and revamp long before we got hit with this virus uh, because the church has been struggling for a good 30, 40 years. And so as we continue to um, figure out how is it that we become the and continue to be the beloved community of Christ in today's time, um, why not take some time? to totally break down these old systems that have hindered our call to spread the gospel before. I talked in some past sermons about just taking this opportunity to be still and slow down. And that's what Sharon was talking about in our Bible study this morning. Um, the Israelites have been forced to stop. They were forced to slow down and revamp. And so now that we have actually an opportunity to slow down and revamp, we can take some time to see what is the new way of ministry that God is calling us to. We've got the opportunity now to serve people who are looking for God by creating a space that looks and models um, the same type of example that we saw in Acts in that first church. If we can't do physical potlucks, maybe we can do a virtual potluck. If we can't have everyone in church on the call, maybe we can just commit to calling one another one by one. Um, I don't know about you all, but some of my most meaningful and impactful conversations have happened while I was in my PJs on the phone with one of my good friends who's calling and walking with me through whatever situation that I'm going through. And there's a lot of people in our congregation and in the community that need a friend like that. So we've got options and we've got time to, to unpack and to rebuild and rethink and revision. Um, one of the other things that I want to point out, and this is about the last uh, point I want to make, is that um, the first church, their initial gathering was showing us how to reach as many people as possible with the love of Christ. And, and it shows us that instead of focusing on how much we can gain, how many members can we gain, how, how much money can we gain, how much status can we acquire as a church, we're charged with finding a way to um, find how deep we can go in learning the ways of love. It says in uh, Acts 2.42, the, the, the people devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to a breaking of bread in the prayers. And it says that they had generous hearts. And so if we take their example and the model of this first gathering in Acts, then we can see that our spiritual growth happens before the physical growth happens. Our spiritual growth is our willingness to come together and study the Bible, our willingness to call each other and pray for one another, our willingness to keep a positive attitude and to encourage one another, even when we're not feeling our best. So our relationship, if we're following the first act in church, the first church in Acts, our relationships flourish best. We, we grow best when we have generous, kind hearts when we have hope and when we can believe in the miracles and the wonders of the gospel and when we witness of those things to others. So our, our hope in this time, in this season, in this hour in the world lies in stretching beyond where we are right now, stretching beyond our borders, stretching beyond our building and in, in, in and investing all of our hope and all of our energy into God's future, into God's kingdom. So this Communion Sunday, this is our Communion Sunday. Let's remember that the Last Supper was a celebration. It was a symbol. It was a lesson for us in fellowship, a lesson for us in sharing the love of the gospel. All are invited to the table. 
all are offered forgiveness and all are delivered from the slavery of sin and death to the glory of eternal life with Christ. This is Easter, my brothers and sisters. This is the message. This is the time to remember our call to repent and to believe in the gospel. So let's take our focus off of doing it right, uh, perfectly well, I should say. Um, let's take our focus off of the impossibility of the times or what's making it too difficult for us to be this beloved community. And let's place our focus instead on the good shepherd. The shepherd that we know will leave all behind to make sure that not one of us gets left or that one of, not one of us goes astray. Let's remember the good shepherd that we know we can trust to be with us no matter what our storm, no matter what our grief, no matter what our pain or our anger, no matter how afraid we are or what our doubts may be. Remember the good shepherd who is our strength when we are weak who is our peace when we are conflicted. Uh, remembering the good shepherd this week, who has the answer when there seems to be no answer, who gives us hope when there's nothing but despair. So we have to remember, like it says in Psalm 23, which we read today, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. He makes us to lie down in green pastures, leads us beside still waters. The Lord restores our souls and leads us in paths of righteousness for God's sake, God's name's sake. And even though we may be walking through the darkest valley, we can fear no evil for God is with us. The rod and the staff of our good shepherd, they comfort us. You prepare a table before us in the midst of our enemies. You anoint our head with oil and our cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're going to move into our communion service, and um, I want to find a way to do this that will work best for the Zoom, Zoom setup we have. So I think what I'm going to do is um, read, read first, and then I will um, position the camera in such a way that you'll be able to see Bennett and I um, administering communion to one another. Um, so let's, let's begin this uh, prayer, uh, our, our communion service. And I got this actually from the Louisiana Conference, United Methodist Church. They've offered a Eucharistic prayer for the global pandemic. And this is a, basically a, a communion service that was tailored for a time such as this, exactly what we are going through today. And um, as we're going through the communion service, I'm going to direct the uh, group to respond, and I will give you the words to say. Um, when you hear me say, and the family says, I will then also add what, the, what I would like for you to, to speak back as a response. So, for example, uh, when I say, and the family responds, uh, let's see, and the family says, we lift them up to God, then you would all say, we lift, we lift them, them up, up to God. God. And so this is how we'll, we'll do our communion service for today. Um, and um, I look forward to your feedback on how, how you felt it worked. So let's begin um, the service now. Uh, we are experiencing holy communion in a new way today. Um, let me just make sure. Can everybody hear me okay? If you can, can you give me a thumbs up? Okay. All right. So uh, let's see. So we're experiencing Holy Communion in a new way. Um, this is our second time having communion while we're physically separated from one another. But we're still bound together as a family through our baptism. And as members of the household of God, we now are joining together virtually, yet we're still present to one another 
as we gather for miles away. This presence is marked by our shared praises and our prayers, our shared hearing and affirmation of God's word, and now by our shared receiving of the sacramental meal. And now as we share in this great Thanksgiving together, um, just remember that every time I say the family responds or the family says, you're going to repeat back the response. So uh, the presence of the Lord be with us. So we lift up our hearts. And the family says, we lift them up to God. We lift them up to God. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Because it is the right thing to do. Not only now, but always. Day after day after day. And the family says, day after day after day. Day after day after day. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Creator God, that you made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away our love failing and our body's disease, you reached out to us again and again, providing healing, wholeness, and new life. When the flood came, you provided an ark. When the plagues came, you provided safety. When evening came, you provided a pillar of fire. When exile came, you provided a new song. Day after day after day, Amen. your love remains steadfast. And the family says, day after day after day. Day after day after day. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. The family says, holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power, power and, and might. might. You are all right. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. And the family says, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And the family says, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is your son who came to preach good news to the poor, release to the captives, Amen. and recovering of sight to the blind, Hallelujah. to free the oppressed, and to announce that the time had come yeah. when you would save your people. Hallelujah. He healed the sick, and the family says he healed the sick. He healed the sick. He is healing the sick now, and the family says he is healing the sick now. He is healing the sick now. He will heal the sick day after day after day, and the family says day after day after day. Day after day after day. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us be a community of healer and hope givers as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. And the people say, Christ has died. The people say, Christ okay. is risen. Oh, yeah. And the people say, Christ will come again. Christ will come again. And now, O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we can be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. 
by your love, by your sacrifice, and by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with one another, and one in ministry to all the world. And Lord, in this season of social distancing, may you remind us that we are never spiritually distant from you. We belong to your body. The family says, we belong to you your belong body. To your body. May the Spirit use us to heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. And the family says, we will we'll heal, heal and recognize, recognize reconcile in Jesus' name. And now the family. We will heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, Holy Spirit, again, make us one in Christ and one with one another and one in ministry to all the world. And let the family say, Amen. Amen. And also, let us pray together now, as we have prayed many times before, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be thy name, thy thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now... Let us remember, and um, you all can get your uh, your bread together, uh, and your juice. Everybody ready? <laughs> okay. So now let us uh, remember that this bread reminds us that any life, no matter how broken or sick or distorted it may become, can be made whole again. And also let us remember that this cup, any life, no matter how empty or lonely or isolated it may become, it can be filled again. These are the gifts for the family of God. And the family says, thanks be to God. And now let us administer the sacrament. Then this is the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ, Bennett, shed for you. Amen. And the fee, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. 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 Everybody receive their communion? <laughs> well, um, we give thanks to God for the opportunity to share and commune together, even by video and by phone. Amen. Um, the spirit is not bound to location. The spirit is free, and it blows where it will. And so I know that right now we're all in the presence of the same Holy Spirit. And uh, I want to also at this time, uh, I think we're in the point of our worship where we will have our altar call or our time of prayer. And so I want to invite um, any of you who have not shared your prayer request at this time um, to lift those up. You can either write them in the comment bar or the chat, the chat box that's located to the right of your Zoom screen, or you can um, share them verbally. And um, uh, not sure exactly how that will work though. Um, if you're on the phone, I think we've got the prayer request for those that join by phone, um, but I'm not sure if we um, had anybody else to join. Do we have any others joined by phone? Okay. No, we didn't um, have any others. 
uh, but I would say Mr. Triplett or Ms. Robinson, if Mr. Triplett, did, did you have any other prayer requests? No, no, that's all. That's all, Pastor. Thank you. Okay. And Ms. Robinson, did you have any other uh, requ prayer requests? Okay. okay. Okay, then. Um, and Ruth, did you have any prayer requests for today? Uh, yes. Hi, everybody. Uh, Hi. I just found out that a former uh, high school uh, classmate of mine passed away this week. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we pray for the family of Billy Williams? Okay. All right. Amen. Will do. Any, any others? Uh, and just for just everybody out here that is going through this difficult time uh, with the whole world, uh, just pray that pray for them for everybody to keep their head up and know that uh, through God's hands this too shall pass. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I don't see any others in the chat box or. Uh, and, and so if, if any of those who are on video did have a request, um, you know, if you type it in the chat box once I stop praying, I may see it, I may not. Um, so if you've got something on your mind, I, I'd like to hear it before we start praying. There was one added by Billy in the chat box. Okay. Uh, okay. I know that's right, okay. Okay. All righty. Well, let us, let us pray. <clears throat> Holy God, we are so grateful for the opportunity to um, be gathered together today, for the opportunity to receive your grace through the holy sacrament of baptism, uh, for the opportunity to support one another in love and in faith. Lord, I thank you for those who have um, made themselves available for this worship service. And I pray first and foremost that um, they have received what it is that you have for them to receive in this call and um, from the message and from this service, oh God. Um, I thank you for their faithfulness and um, ask that you would keep them in their households and all that, that are connected with them um, close to you, O oh God, and wrapped snugly in uh, the protection of your embrace. Lord God, I lift up a prayer for the world today, um, especially as we are all across the globe battling the coronavirus, Lord, that you would help people to stay encouraged, um, to keep their heads up, oh God, and yes, to know that this too shall pass, yes. and that even in the midst of the difficult storm that we are facing as a human race, um, that we are not alone and that uh, we will come out on the other side of this um, by your grace and by your mercy. Uh, so, Lord, give comfort and strength and encourage the spirit and the soul of all of us who are going through this uh, very difficult time. And, Lord, not only is surrounding the coronavirus do we pray for the world, but we pray for the world on every level, oh God, um, from the administrations of the governments of countries here as our country and countries all over the globe, um, down to those who are in the neighborhoods. Um, and you know best what the struggles are for each and every person. And so, Lord, we pray for your touch for each and every person in this world, wherever they may be. Lord God, I want to thank you for being with Kenneth Johnson as he goes into the hospital to be tested, oh God, um, that you would keep your hand on him, that you would keep your hands through the hand, uh, on the hands of the doctors and the nurses and anyone who will be coming into contact with him there. Lord, that you would protect him and not only protect him, Lord, but that you would also instill your healing um, into, uh, into him, oh God, and that um, you would keep him 
through this time. Lord God, we want to lift up the family of Billy Williams. Um, Lord God, that you would comfort their hearts. And not only the family of Billy Williams, oh God, who have uh, lost uh, their loved one, but also all of the families that we know of who have lost loved ones. And there have been so many over this last few months, oh God. And so we just ask for a special grace of comfort and um, a presence of your Holy Spirit through this time um, that all who are grieving will know that they are not alone on this journey. Lord God, we lift up those who um, do not want to practice social distancing. Lord, we lift up those who um, do not have the materials that they need to safely practice social distancing. Um, and we just ask that you would uh, touch their hearts, oh God. We ask that you would keep all of us um, in, in light of the fact that we don't have control over what they will or will not do. Lord, we ask that you would keep us protected. And Lord, you, you know, there's a saying, you protect fools and babies, oh God. So if there are folks yeah, out there not right. wanting to protect themselves and socially distance, Lord, we just pray that you will protect them despite the danger that they are um, facing for themselves or posing to others. Um, Lord God, I, I just also want to lift up a prayer of thanksgiving, um, a prayer of gratitude for the love and the beloved community that you have called to be um, through Solomon Community Temple. I thank you for their faithfulness, for their hope, um, and for their inspirational living and lives. Lord, bless us all. Keep us all um, from this time until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. I'm going to share a prayer for all of us to, um, to read together. Just bear with me here. Um, okay, do you want to lead the, do you want to lead that pastor or shall I? Um, I'll lead it. It's an altar call prayer, so I don't mind that. Um, sure. Let us pray. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when schools close. Remember those that have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips. Remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of this economic market. Remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for quarantine at home. Remember those who have no home. As fear grips our community, let us choose love during this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around one another. Let, let us find a way to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbor. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. That was beautiful, Krista. Our, now we will move into our closing hymn, I Know It Was the Blood. And Billy, are you comfortable leading this one? Okay. All right. Thank you. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. They nailed him to the cross they nailed him to the cross 
They nailed him to the cross for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And they nailed him to the cross for me. He rose up from the dead. He rose up from the dead. He rose up from the dead for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. He rose up from the dead for me. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. He is coming back again for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and he's coming back again for me. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Amen. Amen. You want me? Sorry. I realized. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. That was That's wonderful. Right. <laughs> that was hallelujah. And now pastor will lead us in a benediction and then stay tuned for announcements following this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And now go out into the world and labor to bring forth new life. Dream dreams, pursue visions and speak of God's goodness in the words of those who would hear. And may the God who breathes life into creation be your delight. May Christ Jesus give you hope in your dreaming. And may the Holy Spirit, your advocate and supporter, set your hearts ablaze with passion for peace. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. In the name of Christ, we all say, Amen. 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 Wonderful worship. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, before, this is nice. Before we all go our way or participate and just um, just visit through Zoom afterwards, um, there are a few announcements that I want to bring to attention this week. The first of which is what's well, not on here, but so now that you participated in worship this Sunday with Zoom for the second week and some new elements. Please um, email either Billy or my call, Pastor Fee, with any comments that you have about what worked well, what didn't, what could have been better. Um, I'm curious to know if you were able to, to comfortably read the stuff that was on the screen, if that came through well for you, if there was some way that um, that could have been improved. And again, uh, we do intend to send out bulletins with the next newsletter, which brings me to the next point. For those of you who are receiving newsletters through the mail, if you would prefer to receive them via email, please contact Billy. Her phone number and her email address are on the screen. Um, you can also contact Pastor as well. That information is in the newsletter if you need it. Um, we are also, we are restarting the food pantry. Right now, Pastor and Billy are meeting to discuss a plan for that. How 
that we, how we can safely distribute food to people in, our, in need in our community. If you would like to participate in that, you would like to volunteer with the food pantry, or if you know somebody who would like to help with the food pantry, especially somebody who is younger, maybe teenagers um, or college students who really are looking for some way to participate in the community to, to make a difference, please forward their information to Billy so that she can reach out to them. As I said, Pastor and Billy are in the process of developing a plan for how to do this. We want to be sure that we follow CDC guidelines for um, ensuring the health and safety of our volunteers. And so um, they are looking for ways to include opportunities for people who fit into high risk categories to participate. We may not be able to accommodate everybody who desires to be part of the food pantry, but they are working on that and they will be in touch with you once that, has, that process has been developed. But we are hoping that in the next few weeks, um, maybe within the next two weeks, um, we can have that up and running. Um, Pastor or Billy, do you want to say anything about the food pantry? Um, we, we're still going to be, uh, I, I don't have a lot to add to what you shared just now. Um, I think as we meet and we figure out exactly what we are able to do, then we'll, we'll reach out to folks for sure. Great. Thanks. We'll have an update for you next week, hopefully, next Sunday. And, um, and there may even be an update in this newsletter, if not the following newsletters. Just keep watching for all the different ways that we are communicating with you. Um, just as we gather today through Zoom, there are lots of opportunities throughout the week when we can gather. There are the organized activities or organized gathering times that take place most every day of the week. On the days when we don't have organized gathering times, please use that time to reach out to somebody in the congregation to have a private personal conversation. But every Sunday we gather at 10 a.m. On, um, on Zoom for Bible study led by Sharon Black and then worship following directly following like we are today. And if you receive, you all received that Zoom invitation through the email from, um, from Joanne and the inv information is also in the newsletter, forward that on to people, forward that on to your friends and family who are local and who aren't local so that they have the opportunity to participate in worship and Bible study as well if they would like to. Everyone is welcome and if they're feeling a little anxious about joining um, a community of worship in such a sort of in intimate and obvious way with their picture right on the screen, invite them to join and to not have the video footage if that, if that makes them more comfortable. But please extend the invitation to others. And then there are other invitations that um, for you and for your friends and family as well. Every Tuesday at noon, Pastor Fee leads a Bible study that is accessible through the conference call line. And every Wednesday morning at 8 a.m., Sharon gets on the conference call line to join people in prayers. It's called a pause for prayer. She's usually on until about 8.15 unless somebody joins her and then it could potentially go longer depending upon what the need is. <laughs> Thursday evenings, there is Bible study again that is also led by Sharon and that is accessible through the conference call line and Pastor Fee is available to you now just as she has always been um, by appointment her phone number is listed here on the screen it's also on the newsletter and I believe it's on our website so reach out to her if you need a private conversation private prayer if you are struggling with anxiety or fear or grief or anger or um, or you're feeling excited and hopeful and have ideas and visions, just reach out to her. She is eager to spend time with you. Yes. And finally, um, Martha, um, yes? I'm sorry. I just wanted to let folks know um, the number that's listed is the church number, and that's okay. Um, but also, if you have my cell number, which I think most of our members do, um, you can also call my cell number to set up an appointment, too. Great. Or, or email me. I'll put that information on the next slide. I mean, the next next week's. We'll have it correct for next week is what I'm saying. But thank you. And then finally, we are continuing to do ministry, such as the food pantry. We are in conversation about how we can support 
the, child, the youth of our congregation, the youth who are part of the Rising Sun program, and how we can support their families. And we're looking for other ways that we can be providing vital new ministries during this time. All of those ministries require funding. And our pastor continues to need our financial support, um, our financial responsibility towards her in this congregation. So please do not forget to, to tithe to Solomon Community Temple. And there are ways that you can do this. You can drop a donation off at the church in the mail slot, through the mail slot. Um, I believe that Dorothy is there once a week. I think that's on Tuesdays generally. Um, but you can always just drop it in the mail slot as it is convenient for you. You can also email gifts to Sol or mail gifts to Solomon Community Temple. Um, the address is here on the screen. It's also on the newsletter and it's on our website and you can look it up on the, just Google it, you can find it. And then finally, through the website, through Solomon's website, which is solomoncommunitytemple.org, there is, um, you have the option of giving directly through the website with a donation, um, a donation application or button. Um, I see that I, that there is, uh, just a minute here, I thought I saw a note come through and I can't figure out how to find it. see. Um, okay, just ideas that people have about potential new ministries. So I'm not going to read that. I thought maybe there was a message I needed to pass on to you all. So that is all I have to say. Pastor, anything else that you want to add before you wish us all a happy Sunday? No, I think that's it. And I'm just grateful for for the chance to be together with you all today. Thank you so much for your leadership, Krista, and for all of your leadership in getting the thing out and, and going. <laughs> I'm very excited to have been here with y'all this morning. So have a blessed Sunday. Yes, everybody have a blessed Sunday. And I don't see Stephen there anymore, but I want to pass on that the altar is beautiful. I appreciate that. I'll let him it know. Is. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Happy Sunday, everyone. Happy. All right. Have a happy good one. Happy Sunday. Good to see everybody. Bye. Bye. Get out and get some of this warm day. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Until we meet again next week. Yes. Yeah. This was nice. I did figure out that who that Z4 is. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if it's um. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I tried putting it in the waiting room, and I at, clicked the ask to start video, uh, and I don't know if it has something to do with Zoom, but I've never seen that before when we had our other meeting. Hmm. Was so, it there during Sunday school? Say again. Was it there during Sunday school? So it was. Hmm. Oh, I just realized I'm still recording, so I need to stop that. <laughs> All right.